Namaskaram, flow mashkaram, the flow in me sees the flow in you. How's it going? My name is Sumet Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy, and I'm a flow state specialist, so I help people feel their best and perform their best. Today, we're going to be starting off this video speaking about deep thinking. Okay, deep thinking. This is one of my favorite things to do, okay, as you guys know. I'm going to start off with, let's see what the guides have to say about this topic and how they can guide us, okay? I work with several spirit guides uh, and more. So let's see where this is coming from. Let me just muscle test to check. From Janus, okay? So Janus is the god of doorways. And what he has to say on this topic is, focus on the positive, okay? Focus on the positive. This is key, okay? This is really, really key. I mean, I'm a positive psychologist, so, you know, focusing on the positive has been one of my greatest applications to this craft of anything, right? I'm just looking at the strengths, not looking at the deficits or weaknesses. Of course, those are there. Like, if you were to do like a SWOT analysis, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. You gotta understand that the opportunities and threats are related to your opponent's moves and the strengths and weaknesses are your moves. First of all, as I'm gonna be talking about this topic, I'm getting influence from the art and science of this thing. The art goes into the art of learning, Josh Waitzkin, okay? And the science goes credit to Andrew Humerman, okay? So let's first of all understand that there are two perspectives to this thing, okay, of deep thinking. Now, first of all, my flow profile is a deep thinker. If you're unaware, there's many different types of personality archetypes that connect you to your flow state. So I would be more so a, a deep thinker, a little bit of a flow goer, I would say too. And um, flow goer is more so like a, a yogi in a sense, whereas a hard charger is like the go, 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 um, like extreme sports athlete. And then the, the crowd pleaser is almost like the musician or, or they feed off of an audience or that, that kind of level of extroversion where they get energized by the crowd, right? So there's different types and different styles of a flow profile. If you're unaware of that, now you are, if you don't know, now you know. The first thing that I would tell you, and this is a question from Josh again, Josh, man, you, you're, you're running my channel at this point, man. So number one, you gotta get good at recognizing patterns, okay? So the question that I got initially from Josh was about chess. Are, have you ever played chess, Sumed? Said, do you play chess, Sumed? Just interested because I was wondering how you would flow in something strategic like that. That I'm used to doing sport and just feeling, not thinking like Bruce Lee said, but in chess or strategy, it's different, okay? I would have to agree with you there, man. It is different. And I'm gonna get into the reasons why it's different. Start getting good at recognizing patterns. That's the first thing that I would tell you, okay? Number two, notice that drowsier states lead to subconscious activation where a lot of solutions come through. So it's not necessarily that the person has to be so energized and wired in, okay? When you're deep thinking, you're not completely over-focusing on the task. There's a little bit of distance, right? There's a little bit of analytical uh, perspective shift. I'm more so, I would say, an improvisational deep thinker, so I can like think really deeply on a freestyle rap in a sense, like if that makes sense, rather than like you know me mathematically trying to come up with a solution for something. Like my math skills aren't as related to like we all have our strengths and weaknesses, right? So that's just not one of my, I know that's weird for an Indian to say that. Like, oh, he's Indian and he's not good at math. <laughs> Listen, man, that's a stereotype, okay? That's a stereotype. Don't lump people in one category. Like, that's weird, dude. That's really weird. And also, I didn't really grow up in the Indian culture. I grew up abroad, right? So that's another element of that. So we'll also just shout out to the fact that I have, like, I don't know, like 36K, people liking this random post of the engine Joe a while back, like on my Instagram, that's kind of wild to me, how people are suddenly tuning into this guy, like, you know, almost at a meme level, uh, the new Chad in a sense. I find that hilarious, I find that cool. I found it kind of overwhelming to see like, you know, hundreds of 
likes coming in every second as I check my phone. But that's cool, man. Besides that, that's a distraction from the topic at hand, but I just wanted to mention that. So you want to find the smoothness within the complexity. Okay, complexity can be a flow state uh, trigger. Okay, at an elemental level. But it's that smoothness with the complexity that allows my improvisational brain to also deep think or deep work, as Cal Lumpur calls it, right? Great skill to practice is chunking, chunking things into one group, okay? Just categorizing in your mind, like this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that, okay? Having the ability to create pros and cons list in your mind or, or see the options from before, right? Like in chess, you would have like a premonition or a visualization where you'd be like, okay, G4, pawn to G4, or whatever, right? Like, there's a specific language of chess that is very mathematical, A1, B2. Once you start to get that, you will start to also amplify that level of how good your chess can be and how you can maneuver the, the moves in terms of knowing the fundamentals, knowing what these pieces are capable of, like a rook can go diagonal or this way, but it can't hop over a pawn to get to a bishop. You see what I'm saying? So there's all of these rules and knowing the fundamental, the core tenets of the game, and then getting mentored as well by a grandmaster or somebody else in that field to get you towards your greatest deep thinking capacity. Right, because our brain sparks if we get mirror neurons from other intelligent people around us. We're getting their downloads of intelligence in our space, in our space time. So there's this level of, you know, you turning your prefrontal cortex off to tap into the flow and you turning the prefrontal cortex portal open to get yourself to think a little bit deeper. Okay, so that's really what's going on. It's like a, a modulation of the prefrontal cortex. Okay, that's specifically how I'm doing it when I'm freestyle rapping. Like there's these ideas in my subconscious that are just launching out. OCD, anxiety, overthinking, this all comes down to an overactive prefrontal cortex. Okay, it's too much. There's too much mental energy. They don't know what to do with it. That's why, you know, for people with anxiety, if they're doodling while a teacher is talking, it actually helps them because that excess energy, if you have ADHD, you'll know this too, right? It's like that helps to get it out there, just release it. So deep thinking opens up pathways to more long-term thinking. So this is where the flow state mastery comes in, right? I've said this before in other videos, but overthinking is usually underthinking because you haven't solved the problem yet. And so the same thought is kind of coming in again and again, right? And you're just kind of staying on that same topic rather than evolving or progressing forward. So the biggest difference between overthinking and deep thinking is that deep thinking has layers of complexity and progression moving forward. So it's like, I have this complex analysis of this thing and I'm going to launch into a different approach now to not stay on the same thought. You got what I'm saying? So after being exposed to a bunch of neurotransmitters and stress hormones and things like this, the prefrontal cortex is either turning on or turning off, right? So you also wanna have an internal locus of control. What can you control? And understand that deep thinking comes down to having mainly psychological flow state triggers rather than group flow or environment. It's more so just the concentration and the sustained awareness. It's also from, and this is from The Art of Learning, the precision and accuracy with which you rep the fundamentals, okay? Focusing on the fundamentals, the main rules, the keystones towards that craft. Like for instance, I think um, in the book Art of uh, Learning, he sees these uh, speed chess players, right? In Washington Square Park or something. That inspires him, okay? So him seeing we as uh, specifically men, we, we rely on these visual cues, right? That's how we hunted back in the day. We needed our eyes to see that. That's important to me. That's an important datum to me for sure, to be around other like-minded chess players if you want to be better at chess, man. You got to get around that kind of high-thinking mentality. But also, let, he learned a different style of chess, and then he finally met also a grandmaster 
who then exposed him to a new way of thinking. So having greater depth or greater perspective from a mentor or coach can definitely help as well. Second, I would say is doubling down on your own style, okay? Now your own style of doing something, like your own style of playing chess or the, your own style of writing or your own style of, you know, of fighting, whatever it could be. There's a personal aspect to that, right? There is a, a sense of art or revealing what is emotionally underneath the surface or even the, the things that you're vulnerable about, right? As an artist, you express that. There comes a sense of risk involved. So what I mean by doubling down on your own styles, try taking on different perspectives and then finally use your intuition to make the right perspective for you in that moment. What if you took this concept that Bruce Lee had of mechanical instinct and you applied it into like, I am a robot who's also a natural robot. Like when I'm lifting weights, I might focus on the biomechanics of my body and the form. <laughs> Someone just commented on that reel. Bro lost his virginity before his parents. Okay. <laughs> Man, these, these like Chuck Norris jokes, right? The next thing is using your pain as fuel, as uh, Josh Whiteskin says, right? So he had an incredible loss, but then the next year he won finally. And he spent like these, you know, 10 hours of research daily, just going in, you know, and finding the solution. He, he had an obsessive path working towards getting to why he lost and that ability to take failure and take your pain of your loss and transmute it into this curiosity for you to overcome and strategize against your next opponent to be better to have that growth mindset that's really going to help you so he uses the term investing in your losses Okay, really investing in your losses and using that downtime to like, like the, let the setback become the comeback. When you're stressed out, and this is why you can't be stressed out when you're deep thinking, it rigidifies your analysis of time and space. It keeps you stuck, it keeps you stubborn, okay? It's a rigidity. You gotta change up the space time and have certain pattern interrupts if you're going to be deep thinking. You can't rely on this robotic way of thinking. Right? There's got to come nuance and novelty and excitement and, you know, decisions that might change in your mind and things like this, right? So being adaptable with your thinking as well, being flexible enough that you can bend slightly to see a different perspective and then swerve in to um, kind of contain it. So if you know drum and bass music, there's a metronome tick oftentimes, and if you play around with a metronome, if you're a musician, you understand, you can speed up the tempo, beats per minute, right? And then you can slow it down. So that slowing down, or the speeding up, is changing the concept of time and space, you see? It's music is time travel, music is space travel. Andrew Huberman recommends that you just double down on your working memory, improve your working memory, if you're gonna be a deep thinker. If you can get a better working memory, you're gonna be in that intellect and you're going to be grasping the concepts of your subconscious a lot easier and expressing yourself, right? So it's about the increased reliance on the deep memory stores from the hippocampus to the cortex. And our brain updates states, different states, depending on the demand or the conditions that we create for it. So in terms of chess, you wanna observe the consequences of your opponent's last move. Understand the difference between forcing a move or not forcing a move. If you're good at calculating things, you're gonna be good at chess. And it also relies heavily on your visualization. Can you see the move coming from before, three or four moves back? Can you see and peer into the edge of the future of knowing that you understand the patterns of your opponent's style so that you can maneuver it differently? Right, it's about knowing your opponent, knowing, knowing thyself. So I hope this video helps you out, gives you a different perspective. Have an incredible day. May the flow be with you. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Let's get it. Have an incredible day today. Upward Spiral Gang. We all gonna make it.